the uh, you know sustainability is a top priority at Schneider Electric. Um, I'm very proud to state that uh, you know a few weeks ago uh, we were recognized as the most sustainable organization uh, in the industry. So we are very happy about that. Now this comes in with a huge uh, commitment uh, for the various protocols which have been signed up in terms of the carbon footprint, the amount of uh, you know. Uh, carbon dioxide, uh, you know, uh, credits which we want to give to the various organizations. So, you know, this is, uh, uh, sustainability is a key agenda. Now, what we are talking about is the new electric world through this, because electricity and digital combined uh, is going to be the in thing for the future, which means that if you don't what is not what is not measured is not managed and therefore if you have to be having connected devices uh, and then you are going to constantly figure out improvement areas in the point of consumption uh, that's one area secondly you are always aware that there is a huge uh, generation to uh, utilization uh, you know so distribution becomes the uh, biggest uh, leakage of the uh, electrical energy so this these are some things which we are evolving you know, in terms of sustainability, environmental friendly, SF6 is going to go off. We are bringing in uh, air, air as the environment friendly. Uh, so that is also under the, uh, you know, major program. Now, the other aspect is that when you talk about sustainability, we have a, a team which is advising customers on energy sustainability services itself, which means that how do you intelligently source the power? Okay, the power purchase agreements, you know, can you do a combination of solar plus wind and generate your own electricity in various uh, way, methods to get the, uh, again, carbon credits? Because many of the large corporations are committing, you know, sort of net zero type of a situation by 2030 or 2050. Now, all of them cannot change their infrastructure overnight. So they have to look at the various aspects whether it is water conservation, whether it is uh, energy conservation, because there's multiple aspects into it. And fortunately, Schneider is into all these segments supporting the various uh, uh, customers in this regard. So it, it, we are also uh, topping it up with, you mentioned a little while ago that hardware and software are coming together because that's the only way to progress. You know, that's why I said that electricity and digital have to come together to actually, uh, you know, uh, prepare the map for the future, how it is going to be done. The last aspect, um, this energy sustainability services is uh, the in thing uh, again. So energy as a bare uh, essential for every human being, energy everywhere for everyone at every point is something which we are driving again. So through our CSR initiative, uh, we are uh, looking at uh, uh, providing even uh, the base electricity, uh, the, the, the essential uh, requirements of even a lamp at the uh, remotest location. And then can, we, can it be solar powered and so on and so forth. So that is part of our CSR activity. Not only that, we will also to improve the whole sustainability piece 150,000 electricians are being trained and skilled how to use electricity better and how effectively to deploy electricity. So these are some of the CSR initiatives as well. So it's an all-encompassing uh, sustainability drive from Schneider. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Shritish, you want to add uh, some of your thoughts on this? Uh, I will uh, add something more to what Mr. Venkatraman said. Um, the approach to sustainability has to look at uh, what is called the material life cycle analysis, you know, a product life cycle. You have to, we have to look at the recycling, uh, reusing a lot of what becomes obsolete. That has to be designed at a very early stage because at the end of the day, we are creating a, we are creating a tremendous pile of electronic waste if we don't think about that from a sustainability perspective. The other part is, you know, uh, so you, you design a system which is uh, more resilient as far as the planet is concerned. We are not dumping stuff, which is effectively ending up, uh, you know, we're replacing uh, our processes very quickly. 
our motherboards are very very quickly some of them contain very toxic uh, uh, elements such as cadmium now what do we do what do we do about that if it just goes into a landfill do we not take any responsibility let's say if we are colo then we say okay our customer brought it in fine but at the end of the day the customer goes and says we have no more use this is obsolete let's put it in the dump yard so it's the thought process with respect to where will our components go at the end of the day do we have some sort of recycling reuse built in or not that is very important for sustainability because we are now going to we are at a stage where we are increasing the number of our dcs and the the computing power the second part of it is how we use our energy now i can't hear him uh can you hear me now so the second part the second issue is of course how we use uh, our energy and that is with respect to do we choose a, a ppa which is a renewable energy ppa but then again our grid which is you know if you look at the uh, the dc we are planning for depends more than 90% on the grid and the grid is coal power we cannot go green by just saying we have a third party ppa it's not enough in terms of you're talking about sustainability that is a separate issue to the dc industry it's a larger energy industry issue that you know how do you look at greening the grid which is you know uh, more you, it, you you can make it easy by doing an open access third party ppa where you can do solar you can do geothermal where you can do wind but we are still for grid stability we need coal we are not going green there and that is something for us to think about as an industry i mean can we go 100% green do we have you know even if we are banking of credits and all of that can we still make the grid green enough for us to to call us as long term sustainable it's a it's a more of a philosophical question uh, because i you know there's a leading companies here uh, it, it is for us to think whether we are collectively doing it and then of course the there is the final aspect of economic sustainability which is what we often overlook we are not we don't um we in india the solar sector the renewable energy sector is is very stressed right now it was a sunrise sector 7 years 8 years ago we have we have gone from being an industry an industry an industry which would have potentially has scaled up it has gone from being an engineering industry to being a financial engineering industry and we have generated too much capacity where there is no off taker so one is trying to be sustainable but are you really being economically sustainable because you are end up creating more nps and then there is a knock on effect on the banking system and the entire cycle so i mean is green really going green and is green not turning us into red economically so that aspect also has to be considered again i mean it really depends on how is we like i said at the beginning of my statement we are at an inflection point and the choices we make today is what is going to determine the next 15 to 20 years of the dc industry and the choices have to be very clear in terms of how i mean collectively all of us are able to reinforce a point that we keep a grid green or try as much as possible we try to recycle for sustainability and most of all we are not looking for outlandish profits or outlandish you know financial engineering to increase capacity and then create white elephants that is also linked to sustainability because at the end of the day you are using that material but not putting it to end use while creating a, a white elephant for the banking system so on that note i would say uh, that's all i had to say today so thank you